Hey, what's going on guys? It's Jeff here, back again with another video. So today, I want to review my entire portfolio with you guys, uh, so you guys can see what I'm actually invested in, the various stocks and also the various asset class that I'm currently invested in, uh, mostly in stocks and cryptocurrency. So, for people who do not know, I started investing in Singapore assets um, when I first started investing, which is why there's still a little bit of remaining assets um, in the Singapore uh, portfolio. So, we can just go. Um, but anyway, just before we actually continue, I'll just let you guys know of the entire um, headers that I actually use for this column so it's easier for you guys to understand. Uh, when I put quantity of asset, it simply means that um, the quantity that I actually hold. Uh, when I put total invested, is actually um, the formula of the current price that it is last recorded, which is today on the 28th of July. I'm not sure when I'm going to edit this, but um, that's the price of uh, on the 28th. And the total invested is just uh, the amount of quantity I have uh, times the current price that is currently at. And the profit, I actually put it in terms of EPS because... Um, it's easier for me to check it that way. So if you really want to see how much have I been earning, just take the EPS times the amount of quantity that I have. It's a lot easier for you that way. Uh, and if it is green, it means I'm in the green. If it's red, that means I'm in the red. And however, please do take note that all these uh, numbers might not be the most accurate simply because I do not uh, just trade long term. I also trade in day trades as well. So I swing a lot of the trades, which is why there are some numbers that may seem way lesser than it is. It is also because I have already profited a good amount and then I bought back in again. So the average price is slightly lower. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's just continue with my stock portfolio, okay? All right, firstly, we got DBS Bank. Uh, I think for people who are in Singapore, I'm pretty sure you guys already know this uh, company. I don't think there is a single, sing a single Singaporean above the age of 12 that do not know of this company. DBS Bank, I think it's the biggest bank in Singapore. Uh, one of the biggest bank in Asia, actually. Um, I bought into this um, company at $23.48. This was actually during the circuit breaker in Singapore. That was last year. Um, I actually bought into DBS. Okay, I actually bought into DBS before circuit breaker happened. Um, and don't... <laughs> okay, so I got this funny story is because my uh, my dad and I, we were actually quite worried about this entire COVID situation. So we ended up selling all our stocks when Circuit Breaker happened, uh, which is this lockdown period in Singapore. And we essentially just lost a lot of money because um, all the gains that I had throughout uh, 2018 all the way to 2019, uh, eventually all of them were liquidated uh, for us to actually cut losses, which... I ended up only earning about $1,000 from the two years of investing because I had to sell at such a bad timing. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, I sold my DBS. I actually had 400 shares of DBS and right now I'm only left with 100 shares of DBS because I sold all 400 of it and then I bought back in when the economy started improving again. So I bought in at $23.48, uh, current price of it as what I have checked earlier today it was at thirty dollar and five cents which is um which you know a six point five seven uh six dollar fifty seven cents uh profit for my eps okay moving on to capital land mall trust so i actually got this as a form of REIT, which is a real estate investment trust um i got into this i think i would like to say earlier this year um yeah i saw that the price was all right, so I kind of bought into it, and then uh, we got some sort of a um, circuit breaker 2.0, uh, like a second lockdown kind of thing, which kind of affected real estate prices, obviously. Mm, and yeah, I think because of that, I'm down a little bit. I'm down 16 cents uh, per, per share. And yeah, I'm not super worried because it's not even 1% of my entire portfolio. So as of now, still pretty all right. Um, okay, and then the third one would be the SPDR Streets Time Index, which is an index fund. Uh, it's an ETF that uh, mirrors the ETF for Streets Time Index, which is also the main index for Singapore. Um, it is ES3. 
I'm actually quite a big fan of this actually because um, I bought it at $2.88. This was, I would like to say late last year, um, late 2020, I actually bought into this. And then, um, yeah, I, I bought 3,000 shares and then I slowly liquidated a bit, a, a bit and a bit. And yeah, I managed to get it, get out a good amount of money from this. Uh, but right now, I'm only left with 1,300 shares and the last I checked, it was $3.18. Uh, so I'm currently 30 cents uh, into the money. So that's great. Okay, and last, and I would like to say least, uh, last and least, the one that I actually uh, hate the most, Starhub. Uh, this is actually a stock that really taught me the most in my entire investing journey because when I first started investing uh, in general, I got into Starhub because it was a great dividend it was a great dividend stock and I actually found out that they were giving 11% dividends for a year or so. Uh, prior to that, they were doing about 8% or so. So I thought that it was a very, very good dividend company um, and I bought about a thousand shares at the start. Uh, this was when I did not really have that much cash on hand and I bought it at a dollar eighty cents, if I'm not mistaken. So. Uh, when it went up to two dollars, I bought even more. Uh, yeah, you know, the greed got the best of uh, best of me. I bought in a lot more, and eventually, Starhub actually came out with the news saying that they will be cutting their dividends uh, by sixty six percent, and their price plummeted. Um, like you know, definitely, it went down to from two dollars. It went down all the way to a dollar. I'd like to say a dollar sixty, and then down to a dollar forty, and then recently it dropped down to a dollar twenty. Uh, while I'm still holding on to my two thousand shares at an average price of a dollar sixty two cents. Not a huge fan, but you know, I can't really complain uh, because it really taught me a good lesson. Because at one point of time, I actually thought that you know, why not I just invest everything I have into Starhub since it's giving me eleven percent dividend, and. I thank God I did not do that because if I did, I would have lost so much money right now. Like I don't, I I might even quit investing as a whole at that time, which is why I'm actually quite glad I managed to get that lesson in um, as early as my I think first year of investing. So yeah, anyway, the subtotal um, for my entire Singapore portfolio would be ten thousand dollars. Uh, in Singapore dollars. Uh, if you want the US conversion, it will be $7,705, um, which consists of a weightage of 7% of my entire portfolio. Okay, so I think this one would be the meh part. I think a lot of people are more excited about the US stocks, which is also something that I'm a lot more heavily invested in. Okay, in no particular order at all, uh, these are the stocks that I'm actually invested in, especially in the US market. So this is um, a mix of both um, the New York Exchange and NASDAQ as well. And let's start with the first one, which is Coinbase. Um, okay, Coinbase is a rough one. I think a lot of people um, alongside with myself as well, we actually went through quite a rough IPO with uh, Coinbase because when Coinbase first came out, they started out by doing $220, I think it's about $220 or so. And then they actually uh, spiked up all the way to $300 and all the day traders uh, eventually just sold out of it because they just didn't like the stock enough. And the stock started to go down on a downward spiral and just uh, beat itself up on its own. And yeah, and I've been buying in consistently from there. Uh, right now, my uh, average is $248.68, as you can see here. And yeah, I mean, right now, the price of Coinbase is $235. And right now, we just entered pre-market. And it is at $240 because Bitcoin just went up to $40,000 earlier in the day. And so yeah, I mean, I'm still, all, I'm still quite happy with Coinbase nevertheless. I think Coinbase is still a very good, um, it's still a very good company for me to get into, especially with how I can see Bitcoin being uh, more and more adapted into our daily lives. 
and by a lot of bigger companies to come, I feel that it is definitely going to be something that is worth holding on to. Which is why I think Coinbase is something that I don't really um, day trade as much. Uh, it's something that I basically just buy and buy. I, I don't think I'm gonna sell Coinbase until it maybe hit $400 or so. Okay, next we have Tesla. I think uh, I actually talk a lot about Tesla, especially with Tesla's um, earnings from yesterday. Uh, yeah, let me check. Yeah, so Tesla's earnings yesterday was the, the best earnings report that we have ever seen from Tesla. Um, great revenues, great EPS, great gap income. Everything was amazing. Um, the delivery numbers from uh, the last month was amazing as well. Um, good gross margin for all their automotives and this is just in general just a very very good company in my eyes um, I bought into Tesla when it was about $500 and I actually day traded Tesla a little bit um, Okay, I wouldn't say day traded. I actually swing traded uh, it, I went into a position and exited it in about two to three weeks time um, So yeah, I think Tesla I bought it at 500. I sold it at 800 before I bought it at 500 and sold at 850 before and the last transaction I did was selling it at 700 but right now I still hold a little bit of Tesla right now I'm holding 12 shares of Tesla and right now Tesla price um, is $646 in pre-market but I'm just going to record uh, the price that I have as of yesterday's closing price and yeah so for Tesla I'm up uh, with $97 per share um, and this is not inclusive of the profit that I already uh, made from swing trading Tesla in general so yeah okay Apple uh, this is a tough one because for Apple I think I actually shared with you guys that um, Apple is a really good stock when it was $116 I think I I have told a lot of people, especially on my Instagram, and also just in case you guys have not, you guys who are watching, if you have not followed me on Instagram, please follow me. I'll put it somewhere in the screen and also down in the description box below. Uh, please follow me on Instagram. I cover the news every single trading day, and I talk about a lot of different um, stock-related news that you might be interested in. Uh, so yeah, maybe just drop me a follow and just drop me a DM to just say hi. Okay, for Apple, um, I'm just going to drop the chart up here where you can actually look at Apple. Um, Apple, when it was about uh, earlier this year, you would be able to see $116 on Apple, uh, which was one of the lowest lowest point in Apple for in, in my eyes, which is why I actually bought the dip. I remember buying into Apple at $116.80, I believe. Um, yep. Yeah. So 116.8, um, right. And then that's why my average price is at $117 actually. Uh, but I actually used to own a lot more Apple. I used to own about 64 shares of Apple and then I slowly sold them out at about $145 to $100, no, $144 to $147 because that was my exit strategy where I felt that $145 was a point where Apple would have a strong resistance line and that was where I actually got rid of a few of my Apple and I, I still wanted to keep a little bit of Apple simply because you know I understand that Apple is still a very very good company in terms of the technical wise and for how the company is built I just like the company in general which is why I still kept a little bit and that is how I still have my 15 shares of Apple and for Apple I'm also up at $28 um, EPS, uh, which is great in general. Yeah, I like Apple a lot. All right, uh, next we got QuantumScape. I think QuantumScape is a stock that I actually talk a lot as well. If you follow my uh, Instagram, I actually talked about QuantumScape before. I like the solid, uh, the solid state um, technology that they are actually exploring into, and I can see that happening um, in twenty. 25 to 2028, 20, uh, I can see this company doing a lot more in the short term, long term kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, I bought in at $22.80. I actually bought into it at $25 and then I bought in again. Uh, I bought in at $25 and I bought in at $19 uh, when it was down and I sold a little bit when it was going up and I bought in when it dipped down a little bit. And right now, I don't think I'm going to be doing much 
transaction on QuantumScape. But right now, yeah, I own 230 stocks in QuantumScape at an average of $22.80. Uh, currently, I'm still down um, by $1.39. But according to the pre-market, it is at $22.31. Uh, which means I'll, I should technically be down by about negative 50 cents or so. I'm not too worried about this uh, simply because I'm intending to keep this for quite some time. And if it does uh, challenges the $19 mark again, I'll definitely be looking to buy in a little bit more of Quantum Scape. All right, we got Agora. Um, I think Agora is. Uh, this is tough. Okay, API. Agora, come on. Uh, this is the company that was behind Clubhouse. Um, I think that people who followed me back in, uh, I would like to say back in March, uh, I was actually quite um, quite crazy over Clubhouse when Clubhouse first came out. Um, I was quite uh, I was quite active on Clubhouse as well. I went to various um, rooms of other uh, people who are talking about stocks, people who are talking about mental wellness, people who are talking about um, anything actually, talking about Clubhouse, uh, like a Clubhouse about Clubhouse. But anyway, all those things that I actually went in, um, I was a big fan of Clubhouse. I like the fact that they actually did um, a two-way communication for a open voice platform. And I thought that that was quite interesting. Uh, however, I think that they did not manage to pop off as much due to the fact that they created some sort of an invisible wall um, where they only allowed Apple users and not Android users. And yeah, I think because of that, they kind of slowly fade away because their competition quickly came in with uh, Twitter coming in and also Discord, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and just completely took, took, took over the entire scene and now Clubhouse is essentially just, you know, extinct. And I, you know, because I was so active in Clubhouse, which is why I am also active when I'm trading in, in it as well, which is why I actually invested quite a lot into Clubhouse. I actually had a lot more, but anyway, um, I had 300 shares prior and then I sold a little bit because I thought that it had been sitting around 30, uh, 35 no 38 dollars for quite some time so i sold a little bit and then um i got down to left with 130 so i thought that you know i'm i'm happy with this number i'm just gonna keep it for now and then it just kept on tumbling down and tumbling down and tumbling down it was horrible actually <laughs> because um the price actually went down to 26 dollars right now it's tw uh, it, it went down to 22 dollars uh right now it's 27 uh thankfully um, so yeah, if it does go back up to about $40 without any strong catalyst, I might be thinking about liquidating it. Um, however, if it does go up to $40 without any strong, uh, with a strong catalyst, I'll definitely be keeping it because I think as a company who developed Clubhouse, um, I'm pretty sure the developers in there would definitely be thinking about uh, various other ideas for them to innovate into the space or other spaces for them to um, get better in the future as well. So uh, I'm still quite positive, I guess. Um, haven't really earned any money from this company, but yeah, a little bit sad, I guess. Okay, next we got Roblox, uh, something that I really, really like uh, as what I also uh, explained to some of my audiences about Roblox is because I like how this uh, gaming platform is like um, to the millennials to how Minecraft is. Like for example, if millennials who got into investing had the chance to invest into Mojang or Minecraft, better known as, um, I think that a lot of people would actually do it. and. I feel that Roblox would be a very good legacy name for the Gen Z who are the Gen Z or the Gen X, I guess. What's Gen X actually? Okay, the, I'll just say the Gen Z who are playing Roblox. Um, when they actually get older and they are able to invest and this might be like, you know, the nostalgic name that it comes back to them and they, they might just be like, you know what? How about we buy Roblox? That kind of thing. And... Yeah, I, I, I like it a lot. Um, I got it early on. 
um, and which is why I my average price is about seventy two dollars and forty five cents. Uh, this was actually one of my highest um, weightage uh, stock, um, but I actually went to sell about half of it away um, right before right before it went down because I actually saw better investing opportunities elsewhere, which was quite lucky for me because I managed to get out Roblox quite early on. Uh, but I did not get out the entire chunk. And right now it's staying about $76. And yeah, I think that there is a good chance for it to go back up to $90 again. So I'm not super worried about it. But yeah, uh, Roblox uh, holding 6% of my portfolio. All right, now let's move on to Palantir Technologies. Uh, for people who know, uh, Palantir is a technology company that actually... Um, mainly serve the government uh, in terms of like they are a contract they are a company that does most of their contracts with the government which means their main client base would be the government sector and yeah they actually saw quite high um 52 week highs uh, i'm pretty sure palantir saw a 40 dollars earlier this year as well and i bought it when they dropped down to 20 dollars or so and which is why right now I hold 320 shares of Palantir and I have a two year, uh, I have a, uh, I have two contracts actually. I got two contracts on Palantir, one striking at $25, another striking at $28 in 2023. Um, so yeah, I think both of this, I am, both of this contract I'm quite comf confident in. Um, and even in the stock itself, something that I see myself holding very, very long term as well. So yeah. Okay, Etsy. So we still got Etsy. I think that this is um, a rather creative one because um, a lot of creative individuals actually get on Etsy to buy and sell things. And because the items that are on the platform itself are not mass produced. And because of that, I think there's a lot of extra value that comes from that alone. Um, but yeah, I, I do see Etsy as a tech company. I got in when it was relatively down. Um, I, I got it at 168. Um, I actually saw it at $150, but I was a little bit wary, did not really want to get into it. And then there was a pump upwards to 160 plus almost 170. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna get in on the next dip and I got in. And yeah, I don't think I can regret it as, at all because right now it's $199 and this is like a $30 EPS as well. Uh, so yeah, uh, quite happy with this as well. Uh, just thought that I should have bought more. But yeah. All right, next we got Neo, um, an EV company in China. Um, I mean, China, Chinese stocks in general right now, I think is getting slammed so hard. Um, for people who follow my news as well, I've been talking about the Chinese crackdown, the regulations um, to Didi, to Tencent, um, to Baba, to Ant Group. A lot of things is happening, especially for the Chinese companies who IPO'd in US, especially. And yeah, I think NEO is getting bitten up um, as a result for that as well. I got into NEO quite early on at 38.92. Um, I saw Neo actually go all the way up to almost $50. I thought about selling it, um, but I was a little bit greedy because my exit point was at $55. Uh, so I decided to just, uh, you know, uh, just bite, bite it down and just wait for it. And I eventually just went all the way back down to $39 again. Uh, right now it's at $40, $40 uh, in the pre-market, but you know, not a big fan. Um, same thing, I guess. I'm just gonna keep it. Like, I don't really see any reason for me to sell it now. Um, I will still follow on with my sell strategy. However, instead of holding on to the strong 55, I would be holding on to a 50, 52 to 55 instead. So yeah, if I do see any opportunities for me to get out, that would be where I'm getting up as well. All right. Next, we got Wells Fargo, uh, a banking institution in America. Um, I kind of like it when I first got into uh, Wells Fargo um, because it is considered cheap 
for a banking institution. Uh, I did have JP Morgan before and I thought that JP Morgan was quite expensive. So I got into Wells Fargo instead. Well, I, I still have a little bit of JP Morgan, but I'll get, I'll get to that later on. But yeah, Wells Fargo, I still like it. Uh, I got in uh, relatively cheap at $32. This was during a uh, cyclical down, uh, down period, which is why I was able to get Wells Fargo at such a cheap price. And right now it's at $45. So I'm very, very happy with this, uh, with this purchase. Just thought that I should have bought a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, you know, can't complain, can't complain. Profit is still profit, you know? All right, Zoom video. Um, I think a lot of people who um, are working from home, this company should not be a surprise to you guys. Um, I think a lot of people in the world is using Zoom right now. Um, yeah, I think I got into Zoom as well um, earlier this year, I would say. Um, I thought that there is a high chance that uh, COVID might not get away and this might be this entire working from home might be here to stay and there's also another part of me who thinks that you know with or without covid working from home is here to stay nevertheless and that is why i think zoom uh, would be would be a good company to invest into especially when they actually got um, a recent acquisition of five nine and also um, them trying to do the entire cloud based system telephone Thing. I, th I thought that that's quite interesting as well. So uh, I'm going to stay invested as well for a Zoom video. I think this is a long-term holdout. All right, JP Morgan. I think this is quite uh, needless to say for me. Uh, just generally a good cyclical to hold. Um, even though that it is currently down a little bit. Um, I mean, I'm not super worried about it in general, I feel. JP Morgan is almost like a household name in America. Um, yeah, so... I'm just gonna hold it um, and if something do happen I'm not that worried either because I'm only 16 shares in all right charge point holdings um, this is gonna be my one and only I think my one and only charging company that I hold which is charge point I got in uh, at an average of $21 and 22 cents um, I thought that the whole uh, Tesla Akimodo uh, Ford um neo all of all these ev companies that are going to be coming out in the near future as well um charges are definitely going to be a very big hype just like how portable chargers had, was a hype uh, when everyone realized that their phones were using up too much bat batteries when they are using it way too often uh, so i think that charge point would be a good company to invest into uh and yeah i, I guess like um, it, it has been making me a little bit of money. Uh, I'm already a dollar fifty three cents into the money, so um, I still like it. Uh, same, similar to uh, Quantum State Escape. Uh, quant similar to Quantum Escape, uh, I do see Charge Point as a company that I would only cash out in about twenty twenty eight, even twenty thirty. That's a possibility. So, yeah. Charge Point, you know. Great company. All right, we got Ship Technologies. Uh, I mean, I like Ship Technology um, as a day trick before um, because there was some sort of volatility in it before and I actually played it quite a few time. But actually when I get into the fundamentals of the company, I realized that the CEO and the CFO has been constantly buying more shares into their companies. And I think that is a very, very bullish indicator for a company to be doing well. If the CEO and CFO are so bullish on a company, I don't see why the investors should not be. Um, however, that might be an oversight on my, uh, on my part. Uh, but you know, ultimately I still think that Shift Technology would be um, a relatively stable company. I got in at $7.37. Uh, right now it's at about $8.33. Um, I actually sold half of my, the, my holdings when it hit $9.20. So yeah, I mean, like I said, I do treat this as more of a swing trade uh, than a long trade. But I do hold a little bit just in case something interesting do happen where I see myself investing into this company for a longer period of time. All right, um, next we got Microsoft. I think everyone knows this company without a doubt. 
um, Microsoft, you know, they just had their earnings yesterday. Um, as always, I think the tech earnings are definitely going to be a beat in this um, couple of quarters to come. And yeah, they have been doing very, very well. Uh, I actually got into Microsoft uh, late, late last year, uh, which is why I got in at about $193. Uh, I did not buy a little bit more because it was quite expensive for me at that time. Uh, I did not really want to spend as much money. And so yeah, because of that, I only got five five shares of that. Uh, quite dumb of me. Uh, but anyway, that it went up to $286 uh, right now in the pre-market. It is actually uh, $288. Wow. So um, I am technically about $95 into the money. And yeah, I mean... Yeah, I should have bought more. So, uh, well, there's no point regretting, I guess. Um, yeah, okay, anyway, um, for the next one, we got SoFi. SoFi Technology. I think that um, if you guys do follow uh, Meet Kevin on YouTube, he actually covered about how SoFi is as a company, and I really liked his uh, analysis on it. Um, and yeah, I mean, I actually read up a little bit of the fundamentals in SoFi, which is why I realized that my buying in points should be at about $14 to $15. Uh, however, there was um, a period of time where he actually uh, challenged $15 multiple times at $15.30. And I thought that, you know, I should get in before it really pumped up. So because of my FOMO, I actually got in slightly ahead of my own entry point. And because of that, um, it did go down a little bit more afterwards. Uh, kind of regret. But, you know, for me, I feel that same thing with uh, Meet Kevin. I think so far it's going to be a very long play for me as well, um, at least two to three years. And because of that, um, I'm 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 still all right with the fifteen dollars buy-in. And right now it's about fourteen dollars and ninety-two cents. I think. Oh wait, hold on. Pre-market is up. Uh, right now, okay, it's fifteen dollars and twenty-four cents actually. So uh, I'm not even. I'm not. I'm at a one cent loss at the moment. So uh, yeah, I think mean, I think so far it's good. Uh, I, I have a call on SoFi as well, striking at $17 by next year. Uh, so yeah, I think SoFi, yeah, I, I kind of like SoFi. So yeah, let's move on with the next one. All right, so Sanos, um, a medical stock. Okay, for this one, um, sad to tell you guys, I think this is one of my, one of my regrets actually, because um, this was from earlier this year about january or so where i did day trading on zosanos um, i actually bought in um, and sold i i traded a lot of uh, pharmaceutical therapeutics uh, psychedelics and medical equipment stocks uh, zosanos was one of them and i mistraded it and i ended up holding 2000 shares of it without selling it and yeah, because of that uh i kind of missed out on selling it and because of that the price kept on going down and with the the entire situation in the whole world degrading as well um the price kept on going down it, it reached like 70 cents um yeah so i mean my buy-in is at 93 cents I've, i actually thought about just selling it completely to just get out of it however i do realize that i do not have any sort of medical stock in my entire portfolio um so i just thought you know uh, i would just keep it um you know just as like a keepsake kind of thing and because it doesn't really take take up that much of uh, my portfolio about one percent and yeah so i'm just gonna keep it there uh, just in case there is any sort of rip in the medical industry i would at least still have a little bit of exposure to that industry but yeah um not not one of my favorite definitely all right, next, we got Wendy's. I think uh, Wendy's is a stock that actually got pumped by Wall Street bets. And I'm actually quite happy because uh, when the when the stock got pumped by Wall Street bets, um, it went up all the way to $29. And then it eventually got dumped, obviously. Um, and it came all the way down to about $21. And I got into this. Um, I like the FMB stock uh, because i clearly do not have any i used to hold mcdonald's but i sold them all uh so yeah i actually got into wendy's instead and i like it for a recovery play and yeah right now it's at 2342 the last i checked 
let's see um wendy's yeah it's still at 23.42 so yeah can't complain can't complain okay next we got c3 ai um an ai company uh literally the ticker symbol is super cool just ai uh, which is one of the reasons reason why I really like it as well. Um, I bought into c 3 I've actually got 200 shares. Um, and when it hit $74, I believe, I sold away 150 shares of it, which is why I'm left with 50 shares in c 3 AI. Um, and my average cost is about $49 right now. Uh, but yeah, I think for c 3 AI, I do see it going up to... I do want to say about $70, but I do not want to be that bullish on it. Um, so I would say $70 by 2022, end of 2022, $70. I don't think that should be an issue. Uh, we should be seeing a tech reversal very, very soon as well. Um, so yeah, keeping it without a doubt. So yeah, let's move on to the next one. Okay, Ford Motors. I think uh, this is one of the old school automotive uh, company. And especially with how Ford is uh, moving over to the EV uh, sector, they're actually delving into that area as well. And yeah, I got in quite late actually. I got in at uh, 1398 and I do have another 14 uh, call contracts on Ford striking at $15, no, $16 um, by end of this year. Really hoping the supply chain don't fail me and they are man they manage to hit their deliveries. And because of that, I'm still going to be holding on to the shares. Um, right now, I'm a little bit down. I'm about 19 cents uh, out of the money. But yeah, I think Ford is still relatively all right. I, I did see it at $15 and I think... Uh, Ford going to $16 by end of the year is still possible um, until any new news comes out. I think I'm still fairly confident in it. All right, Netflix. Uh, I think this goes without saying. I think a lot of people know about this company as well. Um, I like it. Right now, it's not as good. It's not performing as well because a lot of people are um, focusing on the recovery place more than the stay-at-home place. Um, but because of how Netflix is as a company, I thought that it's quite interesting and I can see the entertainment industry eventually going more and more. And with, uh, because right now I feel that Netflix is almost on par with Hollywood. And because of that, I feel that the Netflix brand itself can really grow. And because of that, I really want a small exposure to that. Which is why I got a cheeky six shares in there. Uh, and it actually went up. Uh, I'm $19 into the money. And yeah, I think... I, uh, I don't think I'll be selling my Netflix unless if I have to sell my Netflix to fund my other trades. But yeah, I don't think I'll be selling my Netflix that early on. Okay, Mind Map. Uh, Mind Medicine is a psychedelic play. Um, that I think Kevin O'Leary actually talked about as well. Um, I also went through a few live streams uh, watching the CEO of MindMap talk about um, the psychedelic drugs that they are um, currently going for patent appro uh, approval as well. Um, I bought it at about $2 before and then I sold it at about $3.50, $3.60, I can't really remember. Uh, and then I bought it again at about $3 again. And yeah, it kind of tank a little bit. Right now it's at 305. Uh, I'm down nine cents per share. Um, but yeah, same thing. I'm not very worried. I think this is currently down because of the entire um, the entire marijuana play in US, where legalizing marijuana is a lot harder than we expect. And because of that, I think uh, MindMap is getting beaten up a little bit, especially with all the other worries that we have in the economy. Um, with, well, first of all, COVID. Uh, second of all, we have like a lot of regulation with the entire stocks market just getting pounded and pounded. So yeah, I mean, my mad. Uh, I do hope to see a recovery very, very soon. All right, now we are down to the last three stocks that I have. Um, I think that this stock is probably what you guys are, the, you are you, 
I think these three stocks that I'm about to talk about is probably the most important one where people are actually very, very interested in listening to. So I got into AMC. I actually day traded AMC a lot. Um, I think I earned about a good, uh, I would like to say about $10,000 or so from AMC alone. Um, yeah, I love AMC because of the volatility play from there. Um, and right now my average price of uh, AMC is about $42. Uh, I've been lowering my um, dollar cost averaging every single time. Um, yeah, I mean, right now it's at $38. I intend to lower it to about $41 by end of this week and hopefully to $39 by next week. Seeing, uh, I'll have to see how the price goes. Uh, and right now I do have four call contracts on AMC as well. That's going to be expiring next month. I think that is not going to be working out well because my strike price is at $46. Um, if it doesn't rip up, I think I might be losing money for that four contracts. Uh, but you know, uh, it, it is a gamble for um, options, especially for AMC call contracts. I think uh, I can't really expect much from there. So yeah, I mean, AMC, I think there's so many other videos out there about AMC. And I think they can explain way more than I can about AMC and how the eight community is so strong and all. But yeah, I mean, other than that, I, I don't have much to talk about AMC. Alright, next, Tencent Music. Uh, what can I say? China. <laughs> China screwed it over again. Like, I can't say anything about it. Like, uh, Tencent Music, I bought in at 11.28. Um, I thought that that was really the lowest point for Tencent Music. I like the company. I like that. Uh, I like the music scene in China because I think that it can easily be one one of the scene that can overtake universal music things of that nature and because of that i invested into tencent music um yeah and you know china just decided to bar tencent music from any rights to internet music at all so yeah it's just sad you know it's just sad for for the chinese stocks but yeah, I guess that's that's all for my US stocks. Like yeah, my, my weightage um, for the entire uh, US uh, portfolio is at 77%, which is why I said I'm actually quite heavy on, um, I'm actually quite heavy in my US stocks. Um, so yeah, this is the subtotal in um, Singapore dollars and also in US dollars. You, can, you guys can just do your own calculation. I actually did a 1.32 uh, conversion rate, which is what I am more comfortable with. All right. Last but not least, I think um, we should talk about crypto. Okay, so crypto is going to be a quick one, actually, uh, simply because I don't have that many coins with me. Uh, let's start with the simple one, which is Bitcoin. Uh, my average price is actually at $38,938.92. All these numbers are actually from Kraken and Coinbase because I do have... Okay, so for Bitcoin, I don't really have that much Bitcoin. Uh, I have 0 0.098487. Um, kind of specific, but all these numbers are actually from the platform itself. So I just completely copied it over, I guess. It's easier for you guys. Um, but yeah, uh, my Bitcoin um, weightage is about 3%. It was actually a lot more, but I started to do a recurring purchase order for my Ethereum, which is why my Ethereum started to take up a lot more uh, percentage in my entire portfolio, which is up to almost 7% or so. Um, I actually have 3 Ethereum, 3.1 to 4 um, Ethereum. This was actually worth a lot more. It was about $4,000. Uh, this was prior to that, which is why... Um, I did not sell it because I, th I thought that Ethereum could really go up. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Ethereum is now still at around 2300 I still like it. And yeah, my average price is currently still at $1,800. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm quite in the money, I like to say. Like, yeah, I, I actually earn a lot from Ethereum, I, I think. Um, so yeah, I, I, I like Ethereum. And because of that, I think um, it, my bias came in when... I like Ethereum so much that I went into Ethereum Classic as well for pure speculation purposes. Um, and I managed to earn a little bit, I guess. Uh, right now, I'm about $17 up and I have 19 Ethereum Classic tokens. Um, I might be selling it if it hits $60. 
Um, that was actually my previous exit point. My exit point uh, was actually at $150. It actually went up to $116 and then uh, it did not hit my exit price and it plummeted like 50% in a day all the way down. It was horrible. Uh, but yeah, it's about $50 now and yeah, I mean, still in the money, keep complaining. Dogecoin, like, you know, <sighs> I cannot even say fundamentals because that's simply just pure speculation. It's just a speculation coin. Uh, I bought in after the biggest dip that it had. Um, I think the it went as low as 14 cents, but I bought in at 17 cents. Uh, so yeah, it's at 21 cents now. Happy with it. Um, I might be selling it. If it does go up to about 30 or 40 cents, I don't... I don't intend to earn a lot from Doge. I'm not like the Dogecoin millionaire. Um, I'm not super diamond handsing on Doge either. I just want a small profit and just call it a day. Okay, and now the boring ones actually. Cardano um, ADA. I bought in at $1.12. Uh, right now it's about $1.31 last I checked. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to put it at $1.30. And yeah, in the money for that. Uh, nothing much to talk about it actually. Just another coin, I guess. Okay, Polkadot. Polkadot and Ripple. These two are the only tokens that I actually so-called lost money on, which is quite sad. Yeah, it is sad. Um, okay, for Polkadot, I actually buy into... I bought into Polkadot um, strongly, actually, when it was $30, $40, um, $20, $15. Uh, right now, it's $14. And the only reason why I bought into Polkadot was because I was a fan of the staking function that they actually offers uh, on Kraken, which is 8% um, eight percent on the ROI per annum. And I, I thought that the staking, fun that staking function was actually quite interesting. And so I bought Polkadot just so I could stake it. And yeah, eventually I just keep on buying Polkadot for me to stake. And yeah, I kind of lost a little bit of money on that, not gonna lie. Um, but yeah, it's still staking at the moment. It's going to eventually keep on growing on its own, unless if I buy even more or sell some. But I don't see myself selling it unless it actually hit like 50 or $60. So yeah, Polkadot. Polkadot is just Polkadot. So yeah, uh, lost a lot of money on it though. $13, um, negative $13 EPS on that. Okay, Ripple. Pure speculation as well. Uh, it plummeted down. Uh, the last I checked was actually about seventy-two cents or so. Um, so yeah, I think yeah, XRP. I might just sell it for a loss. Actually, uh, not a big fan of it anymore. Uh, but yeah, so the, my entire weightage of my um, crypto portfolio is about fourteen percent, which all in law it all equates to. Do -do 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 yeah so my entire stocks and crypto portfolio uh is going to be a total of a hundred and thirty six thousand nine hundred and sixteen dollars and in terms of usd is about a hundred and three thousand dollars seven hundred and twenty four thousand uh a hundred and three thousand seven hundred and twenty four dollars uh yeah and for all the weightage that i actually did i did a round down which is why it's actually 98 a 99.98 percent uh, supposedly it's supposed to be a hundred percent, but I just did a round down because I did not want to see like a bajillion numbers in the decimal place. But yeah, that's my entire portfolio. Uh, might be a little bit boring, uh, but these are the stocks that I'm invested in. If you guys do have any questions that you want to ask, please leave it down in the comment section down below. And please feel free to use my link if you want to buy any sort of coins uh, in Coinbase using my link down below. Uh, also, if you want to get free stocks use my affiliate links for either tiger brokers or mumu trading and yeah all right and that's all for this video and i hope you guys do enjoy um going through my portfolio and if you guys do have any sort of question please leave it down in the comment section down below and do follow me on my instagram as well and i do have a few links below that can help you earn a little bit of money just check them out below as well and yeah if you guys do have any question leave it down in the comment section if you want please drop me a dm on my instagram page as well and yeah i hope that you guys like this video and share with your friends and that should be end of this video and I hope you guys invest safe. Bye!